Welcome again, fellow surfers. This surf report good for the last part of September 2019 into the first week of October 2019. Lots of things going on in the world. Um, is that being explained by a lot of influences outside? Absolutely. Um, it's each individual uh, influence that we're going to be looking at has very specific memes associated with it. They are overlapped, but there is a lot of potentially confusing um, information. So I'm going to hopefully, my goal is to not confuse anybody and give you some accurate insights about what's going to be influencing you so that you can act with confidence in this next week. All right. In the astrology, and in this slide, if you're new here, is simply just a visual representation of our triangulation effort in, um, in the different technologies, if you will. Astrology is in the purple circle. It's the biggest. It's got the most going on. Um, we're going to drill down day by day on what influences are at work each day of this next week. But overall, over the context of the week, there's a lot of squares, a lot of conflict, and there's several planets that are making some very big energetic shifts. So when you have big energetic shifts, you tend to need to adapt. And that could be um, dealt with in a lot of different ways. A lot of people want to escape. A lot of people want to well, fight or flight. Some people are much more accepting. The happiest people on the planet are going to be the ones that are able to accept the change and go with it. Um, what kind of change? I, I'm, I'm having a feeling that these are, are not big changes per se. They're a lot of micro changes that feel all in one like big change. So I think there's a lot of different things going on in this week. All right, without talking more um, around the bush, more beating around the bush, let's get on to the dream bot. We're gonna look at this first, but just to give you context in the grand scheme of things, in the green um, circle, that is all within the astrology. Uh, the dream bot, the collective unconscious is showing us as empowered. It's very yangful but we're also very curious and learning and that's going to be all a part of that adaption. If you can't learn, you can't adapt, right? Simple as that. And then the I Ching reading with the influence part is hexagram 31. And that's actually conjoining that implies with other people, but it has to do what has to do so with the idea of influence. And so that's kind of a paradox is that we are almost the influence like you individually you're the you're the part of the influence this week um that's what the I Ching is is hinting on and i know that <laughs> my probably sounds pretty confusing we're going to get into this later one by one we're going to start with the dream bot uh-oh hello i had a had a little um technological blip there. All right. So we're still in business. It looks like still recording. So this is the dream bot. This is the collection of dreams from around the world that happened just about a, uh, an hour ago. I ran the dream bot and, uh, this is what everyone's dreaming about stuff at the very top. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on. But the blue arrows represent learning and playful and curiosity. And so it's very school oriented. In fact, the word high school is even in their backpack elementary. It's very school oriented. In fact, the word school is in there. So that one is very strong and it's a learning week. Okay. Then, um, the red arrows are feeling empowered. In fact, one of the words is powered, grabbed, headed, resurrection, creating, even the word mad, decided. Um, anyway, so it's, it's very affirmative. It's very strong. It's very yang. And, um, remember this is what the energetic, the, the collective unconscious is showing us what has been programmed in that collective mind. If someone's programming that mind, we know that, well, we, we can hypothesize that they're trying to make us feel maybe like we're empowered or that we have a lot of yang here. And this is where it contradicts the, uh, the I Ching 
because uh, they weren't directly overlapped, if you remember that chart. In fact, I got the chart down in the bottom right-hand corner for your review. But anyway, so the two memes from the DreamBot are very, very strong. They're very, very packed in and poignant, empowered, aware, and uh, the second meme is school and learning. Okay. Now... Let's get into the astrology and uh, drill down each day so that you can kind of see what differences are at play each day. Let me get the pointer out. All right. As we discussed last week, most of you should be remembering that Venus is going to make an exact square with Pluto on Monday in the evening, 1117 p.m., and uh, this is the one that was kind of being led up to um, last week, including the new moon. But on the new moon, it suggested, remember, three days before you do something or three days before you make your action. And this was one of the considerations of why you want to wait, because this is a this is a, a an ending. If Pluto is the hidden force and the destroyer. Um, is like death and rebirth and Venus is harmony, beauty, relationship, intimacy, and, and Venus is even in Libra. This is a square. And so it's very conflicted. And so there might be an abrupt end to harmony. There might be an abrupt end to, um, some things beautiful or some things that you have that you like that bring harmony in your life. There might be an ending there, uh, i.e. Pluto. Now, Pluto is one that's going to go station and go direct later this week, and we'll, we're going to talk about that, but it's going to have some extra strength in here, but the exact location of this square is at 11.17 p.m. Central Daylight Time on Monday. Now, here's something to consider that um, September 30th is arguably the, well, not arguably, but is the end of the fiscal year for government, military, and probably some other corporations. But astro astrologically, it, it matches perfectly because it is the end of another fiscal cycle. cycle. You know, um, Venus also has a hand in finance and money. And so we could be seeing an ending to that. If nothing else, this could just be the end of the fiscal year. Um, but I think there's more than just metaphorically in here. And this is probably the biggest caution of wanting to move forward. So the collective, remember, the collective dream bot, the collective unconscious is, um, is feeling empowered. And so it wants to go do stuff. And um, we can already see that that is fairly limited because we have these squares. It's hard to move forward in these squares, it, there's more obstacles that cre get created. There's conflicts there or can be. And so, uh, tread carefully and I'm going to, you know, go ahead and kind of, um, give you a, um, a hint from the summary slide is that we don't want to be achieving too much this week. Tuesday is easy to get lost in the imagination. We've got kind of a moon in between the, you know, the Mercury and Venus area, and then not quite to Jupiter. And so it makes several of these, um, hard aspects. This is a, this is not hard. The trine over to Uranus or Neptune is very positive. Um, and you know, they work well together, moon and Neptune. They're very dreamy, emotional, um, so you might get lost in emotional imagination, emotional reaction to Monday's reset. That square is going to hang out for a, or for a few days. It's going to, it's going to start decreasing, but, um, it's, it's still, uh, still within the orb on Wednesday, the square is still there. And now Pluto is going station. And so, um, not that Pluto whips around this guy's, it's the slowest of all the planets to go around this Zodiac, but it's going station now. It's going to go direct, um, next 24 hours after this. And while it's doing this, it's giving a little bit more f floodlight on this alignment. And so 
Um, even though the energy itself, the square itself is waning because Venus is moving or, around pretty quickly, but it's still within the orb. And now Pluto is kind of like shining a little bit brighter right now. It's energy and its energy is more of death rebirth. We also have a sextile over to the, the sun, moon, sun, sextile. That's positive. Um, sense of ego and identity and the emotions are fairly well congruent. And this is kind of like just kind of surrender to whatever change happened from the harmony and balance or, or um, beauty reset or money reset. On Thursday, look at all this that happens. All these circles here is some big energetic change. And the first one's happening at 3.30 a.m., on Thursday morning, um, while most of you are asleep, Mercury heads into Scorpio. Intensity of thoughts are going to increase. Scorp Scorpio, very intense, very can be dark at times, can be powerful, can be vindictive. If you're starting to feel vindictive, suddenly this could be why. We also have, but uh, kind of on the on the flip side, Mars kind of the the go get them and around 11 30 PM going into Libra. And so, you know, this is kind of odd. Mars wants to go do stuff and, and Libra's, you know, not, not a workaholic, um, but more just want to hang out and, you know, be harmonious and do things and experience things. So this could be a little bit contentious, if you will, uh, unsettling. It's, um, uh, maybe I'm fidgeting because I feel like I need to be doing something right here. Um, but the harmony isn't really allowing me a ch chance to get that stuff done. So this aspect in and of itself works really well for what we're going to talk about with the I Ching. On Thursday as well, at 3.43 p.m. in the afternoon, moon conjunct Jupiter. This is a very grandiose kind of a, an arrangement. So after the junk that's been happened in the beginning part of the week, maybe your death, rebirth life, and now emotionally um, recovering from that, and then swinging the other way where I've got lots of energy and I can, I can do anything. And I you know, I want, there's no limit and feeling very grandiose. Um, but we have like a double, a double square. So you have Jupiter square Neptune, and moon square Neptune. And so we already talked about how this, this arrangement in and of itself was imaginatively grandiose. And so we're still, you know, this is this even gets stronger. So like Thursday afternoon, if you're feeling like, um, you're going to be doing something risky because you're overly confident, um, it's time to rethink that because it could be an illusion. Then the other cool thing at night, Pluto is going direct at 7.39 p.m. Central Daylight Time. And so now you've got Saturn and Pluto together, and they're going the same way, um, clo closer than they were before, right? Um, there's an intensity of thought, though. Remember that. There's going to be this Mercury, I think, of all these. The moon conjunct Jupiter in the afternoon is a very important and I think you're going to see a lot of this um, intense thoughts coming in as well. On Friday, now we have a ton of aspects that the moon's making. And the moon whipping around so fast, these aspects don't last long. And so it's kind of like really chaotic emotionally. Um, conflicts shift away. If you notice that these squares, the, they don't, they're not quite as thick anymore. It's because they're waning. And this, even this square that used to be there with, uh, Neptune and Jupiter, that's even, that's getting close to orb time and, and we're going to get rid of it soon. But conflicts shift away from the rebuilding of love or harmony and they shift away from being overly um, grandiose. It's a, ch it's just change in emotion. So for example, look at this, look at this, um, emotion here. So the moon is in Capricorn 
and doesn't necessarily love being in Capricorn because Capricorn needs to get stuff done and achieve. And Moon is more experience. So you got quite the opposite of, uh, of emotional charge. But look at this, like Mars is needs to get stuff done. And that would have been nice in Capricorn. But then, you know, it's it's over in Libra. And so it's just, you know, kind of hanging out and trying to be cordial with everyone. And so, and that's a square. So all that is conflicted and they should be reversed, but they're not. And so that could feel really chaotic. I think that's, I can't remember when that's happening. Um, all right. So living the paradox, at least on that. And then you've got the Uranus trine moon. Um, that could be some fast changes as well sometime on Friday. Then on Saturday, things are not slowing down. We've got moon conjunct Saturn at 3.41 p.m. Um, that's That could be this feeling of wanting to break away, wanting to escape, wanting to be set free, getting loose, getting free from Saturn, <laughs> getting free from rules and laws. And why can't we just be free and have free will and feeling confined? And not only that, this is a square over to the sun. So right at the same time, I'm disconnected a little bit from my identity. I have emotions on the one hand and identity. They're not really congruent. And I'm having problems with kind of relating to people and all that. And I have a hard time relating to what it is I need to be doing right now. Like Saturn is throwing um, an absurd amount of uh, hurdles in my way and causing me to want to cry and give up. But you can't give up. You just have a sense, the sense of lost self is only temporary. So just hang in there. That's Saturday. It could have you feeling like that. All right. And then on Sunday, now we have the moon holding hands there with Pluto. And, and that's more negativity and more, um, I don't know, wanting to be set free and circumvent this, uh, this negativity or this death rebirth, or maybe there's, maybe you're feeling controlled and there's no, like there's, you look around and there's like, there's nobody like directly controlling you, but you're like, man, it just feels like somebody's controlling me. That would be Sunday because moon and Pluto are together, particularly in the beginning of part of the day. And then of course you've got the moon making a square a little bit later with Venus. So that whole thing that we started off with, well, while the moon is with Pluto, that's going to square over to Venus. And so we're, what we started the week with is now what we end the week with. So it's all mainly that Pluto square Venus energy, which is a death rebirth or a feeling of control or something, some big change in finance. Um, again, it could just be the end of the fiscal year. All right. Did I confuse everyone yet? Now it's time to go into the Yi Ching and hopefully this is going to shed a light, a light on everything that we've talked about and it's going to give us our solution. Are you ready? So what we did was in the I Ching reading, we asked the coins to tell us what is the biggest influence. And then if there is a change, that second hexagram is going to be the solution. This is for the next week. And what we came up with was 31. These trigrams up here, the top one is lake, bottom one is mountain. So we have a lake on top of the mountain and it talks about this. It says that it's stimulated the 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 mountain is stimulated by the moisture from the lake and how is this possible is because the mountain isn't pointed at the top there's actually blunted and so you have this sunken area where the water can let, can sit there and so that signifies that we need to be humble and, and free but we need to remain receptive to good advice that's this stuff here that's the influence and when we go into the change lines, this is change line number five. 
It says the influence shows itself in the back of the neck, no remorse. Let's give a little bit more explanation to the back of the neck thing. This is for the first time the I Ching is going to tell you where the influence shows up in your body. The back of the neck is the most rigid part of the body. When the influence shows itself there, the will remains firm and the influence does not lead to confusion. Hence, remorse does not enter into consideration here. What takes place in the depths of one being in the unconscious mind? It is true that if we cannot be influenced ourselves, we cannot influence the outside world. And so, in summary, the I Ching part of the influence, it's saying this is the influence, is that you are becoming the influence. You're be becoming conjoined with the influence. You are becoming the influence. And you're going to know it when you feel it in the back part of the neck. Interesting. I'd like to hear more comments. If anybody's getting those feelings and sensations this week physically in the back of the neck, or whether or not this is just a metaphoric reading. So the summary overall for the influence of hexagram 31, it's becoming part of the influence without creating disharmony. You remember all the, all of the chaos in the astrology, all the changes, all the sudden changes, all the aspects and squares, all the um, Pluto energy that is in spotlight, which is the death rebirth. These are very conflicted. These are, these can feel very disharmonious and we have to realize that you are part of and you are part of the you are the influence on other people that's the whole point of this is that the collective is being influenced by you wow how bizarre so when we apply the change on 5 31 becomes 62 this one is thunder over mountain. And um, when, when you hear mountain, when you hear thunder in the mountain, then it is louder because you're like up there. You're up there with the thunder. And so it's um, not well to strive upward towards that thunder. It is well to remain below. Great good fortune. So this whole 62 is all about small succeeding, small preponderance. Exceptional modesty and conscientious, conscientiousness are sure to be rewarded with success. However, a man is not to throw himself away. It's not about sacrificing yourself. It's not about subservience. It's about correct dignity and personal behavior. We must understand the demands of the time in order to find the necessary offset for its deficiencies and damages. In any event, we must not count on great success since the requisite strength is, is lacking. In this lies the importance of the message that one should not strive after lofty things, but hold to lowly things and just keep the small steps moving forward and without judgment, without presumptions, without losing your identity in it without escapism and just conscientiously, mindfully moving forward, moving up the mountain. All right, time to look at the final slide. This is our, going to be our summary slide for today. So in this slide, I have the influence at the top. And it's showing a boat in uh, rough waters. And that's exactly what we're going to be going through. Um, in this, what feels like being tossed about is that you are also doing the tossing on the rest of, the, of humanity with, without your awareness, potentially. And in this week, it is the point, it is very poignant to remember that you need to become aware of how, how influential you really are and that you are influencing the collective. But, um, but if you get into this conflict and competition kind of meme, it's going to feel like you're the one in the boat getting tossed around by everyone else with these multiple astrological shifts. 
So here's the solution is, six, is hexagram 62. It's being mindful, conscientious, with modesty. It's not a time for sacrificing and subservience and making yourself lower than everyone else. So for example, on that one, um, I was, I was planning on doing a fast and it doesn't sound like a fasting period is appropriate for this, um, because it's not like you're trying to be subservient or not, not, not that that has anything to do with fasting in and of itself, but it is kind of a form of sacrifice and surrender and, and not really a uh, moving forward. This is not a super moving forward kind of energy. But it is moving forward and it is getting small steps done and small achievements. It's a long series of successes, of small successes, and not a one big, oh my gosh, I did it kind of thing. And so it's, it's a more of a day by day, small steps, and seeing how you are part of the overall influence. It's a really paradoxical week. But um, like the dream bot said, we are ready to learn. And uh, those of us who can accept change and can an, and adapt on the fly, not expect too much, let go of your egoic desires, keep pressing forward towards your highest values, I think you're going to have a really great week. Even though it may not feel all that wonderful energetically. All right. So we will see you next week. And um, looking forward to hearing how this report does for you. All right. We'll see you. Take care.